Man, I'll tell you what, the framing about advertising this next snowstorm has been already pretty utterly ridiculous. I've been seeing people saying that this is a huge storm that's coming. People saying are posting temperature maps, but then saying southern snow is going to come, which is obviously misleading. Temperature maps are not snow. Just because there is cold temperatures doesn't mean there's snow. And the reason why that's happening, if we look at our 500 millibar height change, which is just essentially where our lows and high pressure systems are and I push this forward you can see that we're gonna have a little low pressure system move out today that's gonna bring some gusty wind and some snow in the mountainous regions up there and then we're gonna have another low pressure system come in after that this one's gonna be kind of uneventful could bring a little bit of rain for some folks and some wind and then after that is when our main event is gonna come through this little area right here this low pressure is gonna be bringing that moisture out of the Gulf we are gonna be expecting an increase of severe weather some lake effect snow maybe some flurries over there for like Iowa going into Illinois, Indiana. And then on the back side of the system, we're going to have some wind and some moisture kind of pooling over the lakes here. And that will allow for some lake effect snow. We could be talking about some isolated spots of up to seven inches in these areas is no big deal. So really nothing out of the ordinary. There's also some people saying that this shouldn't be happening right now, but we do see this happen from time to time. We get a little snowstorm in November. It's not unheard of. I remember we had a pretty decent snowfall about a couple years ago in the southeast where people actually picked up snow in October. This isn't some, you know, weird, crazy freaking storm. It's just a little bit abnormal. But yeah, after this low pressure system comes through, we're going to see that snow move through on the backside. And then we're going to have another ridge try to build back in behind this. I saw another couple other uh, posts on social media, people saying that like a blizzard is coming. I mean, it, the people are desperate for views right now, I guess. I don't understand why people just can't be honest. But here's the GFS. Uh, as you can see, as we move into the six early morning on the six, we're going to have this little low pressure system move into the northeast. If we zoom in on this area, you can see that most people are going to be experiencing some light rain. But if you live in higher elevations, though, temperatures will be getting down into the below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And that will allow for some snow to fall here in the mountains. And some areas could pick up a decent amount of snow. But uh, on the southern side of this storm, there's another thing that we have to be watching out for and that is going to be some wind gusts which again is pretty typical for this kind of year but definitely going to be able to notice these higher wind amounts especially when we start to get up into those 40 50 mile per hour wind gusts being possible as this little system comes through talking about them really start to begin on the fifth here at about 10 a.m could see those wind gusts start to get up into the 30 to 36 mile per hour wind gust range and then as we go into some of our higher elevated regions we're going to see some higher wind gusts happen there as we go into about 5 p.m. and then it's really going to push by 10 p.m. here on the 5th into areas like New Jersey over there near Long Island. Talk about Connecticut. The higher elevations of New York could probably get up into the 60 mile per hour wind gust range and then down here on the northern portion of the Appalachian Mountains coming into West Virginia. If you guys live up really high up in elevation, you guys could experience anywhere from 50 to maybe even getting up to 65, 68 mile per hour wind gusts and then off the coast as well around 40 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts so it's definitely going to be windy could even see some isolated power outages as this comes through look at this wind off of the coast here of new hampshire over there near nantucket could get up to 60 mile per hour winds there as this trough ejects out of our country and then by the time we get into the sixth early morning going into the afternoon we're going to really start to see those winds die down and calm down before our next storm starts to enter in so after this storm on the sixth as we move into the seventh we could see some snow develop up here in North Dakota, northern Minnesota, some rain back down into the Great Lakes region, not really expecting anything too severe there. Then as we go into the late night portions of the 7th, we are starting to watch down here into the southeast up into the Ohio Valley for the chances for some severe weather. If look at our surface instability, there is going to be some there, especially pulling up here into Mississippi and into Tennessee. That's just basically storm fuel, and there's going to be a decent amount of it. Talking about anywhere from a couple hundred kilogram or yeah, kilograms of instability all the way up into you know a thousand, which is enough to sustain severe weather. Talking mainly a damaging wind event, but I wouldn't completely rule out one or two isolated tornadoes. That is again going to be starting most likely at around 3 p.m. to around 6 p.m. here in the southeast. But you can see how fast that instability kind of dies off there and then we see another resurgence back over here into the south coast going up into south carolina and north carolina which will probably allow for some more thunderstorms to happen and the reason why this severe weather is going to be possible as you can see we have a little bit of a glancing blow from 
from our trough here. Not going to be a whole lot of forcing. See, our wind barbs are generally going in the same direction in our upper level pattern, which means that there's going to be a little bit of a lack of forcing, but there could be just enough to kick off some thunderstorms in that instability. If that does happen, you can see that we're also going to have some lower level winds kind of pile up in this area. And if we get any area where these lower level winds become a little bit more back, that's where we're going to see a small tornado risk. But as you can see right now, most of our wind barbs are pretty parallel, which means that they're not going to really be too much of an issue for tornadoes, but we could definitely see some damaging winds, straight line winds, and some severe weather really from the southeast all the way into the east coast before that system moves out of our hair. But going late night into the 7th into early morning on the 8th of November here, we are going to be watching for a little bit of a low pressure system to spin out. This is the GFS's solution here, and I'm still pretty skeptical in this solution. You can see that there's a lot of, or not a lot of snow, but some light snowfall all the way up there from North Dakota going into South Dakota, Iowa, and then eventually making its way down into Southern Minnesota, Southern Wisconsin, over there into Illinois as well, and also pushing some snow up there into Michigan, scraping just north of Ohio there, and then we get some lake effect snow on the backside, and this is where some of our higher snowfall amounts could come from on the western coast of Michigan, also over there near Lake Erie, and the areas that typically see lake effect snow will probably get some as this comes through. You can see even the GFS says in the higher elevations here, not necessarily in the lower elevations, but up here in the mountains of the Appalachians where we typically do see some earlier snowfalls, we could get some flurries and maybe very light accumulation. You can see on the back side of this storm too, you see these blue lines, that's that colder, freezing air trying to make it all the way down, potentially even into some portions here of the southeast. And as I continue to push this forward, you see our low pressure system lifts off to the north and continues that lake effect snow likely all the way until maybe we get another clipper system, but this is way out in our forecast, so not very reliable there. And the reason that I am pretty skeptical here on the GFS's solution is because when our Euro model forms this storm, it does develop a little bit of snow, kind of like the GFS at the beginning, but look at this. As it moves down into like areas like Iowa, going into Northern Illinois, into the Great Lakes, you can see we're talking about a lot more of a mixed precip mode. And I really do feel like this is more accurate just in terms of the year, part of the year that we are in, but it is November. So, you know, I'll put a little bit more weight onto the Euro, but we still gotta watch for some last minute model shifts. It really wouldn't take too much to have the Euro do something similar to what the GFS is doing. So it is something to watch out for. You know, if this is anything like last year and how our models would give these snow signals all the way up until the event, and then it would actually be some mixed precip, you know, this kind of brings back some of that PTSD from those types of system so you know definitely kind of watch out i wouldn't be too hopeful but definitely some flurries are possible all the way from north dakota got down into iowa and in the southern minnesota even if we get a little bit more of a mixed precip you're probably not going to see any accumulation out of that and then you can see our snow st or our storm system kind of moves off to the east starts to drop mainly most of its snow up there into canada and then we really start to see that lake effect snow machine start here on the euro as well and the interesting thing about the euro is that it tries to fling some flurries as far south as kentucky going into you know parts of the appalachian mountains but keep in mind there's a lot of higher elevations over here into kentucky there's a folks closer to the surface could see some cooler temperatures as well so we might even see some snow over there into some of our lower elevations as well wouldn't be surprised if someone in like northern alabama or northern georgia with this solution here sees like one or two snowflakes but this is not going to be like some snowmageddon or anything that's going to shut down any roads you just might see a random snowflake or two appear before quickly disappearing and that is if this solution is correct again a lot of our models kind of disagree on how far to the south this goes but man one thing that is for certain all these blue lines here are sinking all the way down to almost florida which means we're gonna have cooler than average temperatures really across the board and you can really see that in our map over the next couple of days it's going to be warmer than average for a lot of folks here in the central southern u.s and then also over here in the northeast we're going to be seeing some cooler temperatures as that first couple of low pressure systems kind of move through that area but watch this as we go into the eighth we really start to see those temperatures drop about 10 degrees below average up here in the northern united states which again is pretty normal this time of year we always see a little bit of a cold intrusion this is by no means an arctic blast we're not talking about temperatures negative degree temperatures with some of the wind chills we could get down into the low 20s or maybe even the teens in some areas but we're not talking about any negative temperatures out of this storm and then as we push into the ninth at around 3 p.m you can see that a lot of the united states is going to be below average this is probably going to feel pretty darn cold but again we're still talking 
talking about, you know, 20s, maybe barely below freezing here in the southeast and maybe getting down into the lower 20s in the teens there for a lot of the upper Ozarks going into the Great Lakes. And as we push this into the next day, you can see this cold air just continues to surge down to the southeast. Look at this. For some folks out there, we could be seeing anywhere from negative 26 to negative 29 degrees below average. So it's definitely going to be feeling colder than usual as we get this area of cooler air move into the southeastern United States. You can see that could last all the way until the 12th before starting to really go back into a warmer pattern where we could see some 15 degree temperatures above average, which again is pretty typical when you get a low pressure system on the backside, it's below average. On the front side, it's above average. And then that's just kind of how it goes. So it's not really anything out of the ordinary. It's not really a weird storm. This isn't like a storm we've never seen before. It's just your typical transition of warmer to colder as we go into the winter. There's the snow depth here from the GFS, which kind of shows you how much snow you can expect at one time to potentially be on the ground. And this is kind of the best case scenario for snow. You can see through Sunday, we're going to have uh, the potentially up to maybe an inch or two in this thin little strip here with central Minnesota kind of missing out on a lot of that snow, also parts of North Dakota as well. And then as our system moves off to the east, you can see that coming up on Monday, we could see anywhere from one to three inches, maybe up to seven inches in some isolated spots up there in the UP of Michigan, also into the eastern portions of Michigan with a strip of one to three inches moving down through Detroit, also into near Lake Erie, near Erie, Pennsylvania, maybe just to the east of Cleveland, Ohio, and then also over there near Buffalo or just south of Buffalo there. Could see anywhere from one to four inches. Then you could see that, uh, you know, it could get a little bit higher. Just really depends on how long that lake effect snow kind of sticks around. We could maybe even end up with up to nine inches over there at the ground at once. But you can see after that portion of time, our snow starts to melt. And then we kind of start waiting for our next snowstorm. But yeah, folks, that's going to be it for me. Thank you again for tuning in. Kind of sucks to see that we are already seeing so much misguided presentation and communication uh, of this storm already that just goes to show that guys unfortunately you're going to be dealing with a whole lot of clickbait this uh, year which is kind of the same as it happens every single year unfortunately and to see it starting off this early with such a weak storm is unfortunate but you know that's just the way the uh, cookie crumbles sometimes thank you all so much for tuning in guarantee you that we will keep it legit here so make sure you hit that subscribe button if, if that's something that you want kind of cut through all the noise and all the bs but all right see y'all later peace